Hi guys, Queen of Flannel here. Welcome back to the channel. So, it has been a... It's been a minute since I have uh, recorded anything for you guys. Um, yeah, we... Uh, We've had some some life issues going on here in the uh, the flannel house. Um, I know I sure a little bit about what was going on on the community tab. Um, you know, it, we have if you're if you're new to the channel, we have quite a few animals here. We have uh, guinea pigs and rabbits and cats and a dog, and so there is always something going on with um with one of the animals and had um issues with one of our guinea pigs and then that calmed down and then we had a big huge issue with uh with our pug and so it was um a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of trips back and forth to the uh to the vet and I am hoping that we are rounding a corner enough to where I can get back to working on some content for you guys. And so today, because the response to my underpainting with um, markers and pencils went so well, and a lot of you guys wanted a bigger project with, uh, with markers and pencils, that's what we're going to work on today. So I have picked a page in Kirby's new book, Mythic World, and I have selected a few markers and a few pencils. We're going to start small and see where we go from, from there. If you are not familiar with the video that I am talking about, I will up there in the corner. Um, that is the more detailed technical explanation of underpainting with markers and then using pencils for detail so obviously I am going to walk you guys through my my process in the project but if you want to know more about color matching and and whatnot the majority of that is going to be in the other video so to start out I am going to be working with my Tombow water-based markers and my Faber Castell Polychromos. And I may bring in some different markers later on just because I know that we had talked about some more affordable and easier, easy, ugh, easily accessible options. Uh, you do not need expensive markers to do this, but I do like the Tombows. And since the image that we have picked is pretty detailed and these have a really nice fine brush tip on them this is what I'm going to start with and we are going to work on Thor um I am still working out my plan for the background and my coloring for down here but I have kind of an idea in my head for how I want Thor to look and I did take inspiration from Chris Hemsworth's Thor when I picked my colors. So let's just get into this and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So I've decided that the cape and this portion down here I'm going to do in this red color and Tom the Tombos don't have a uh, there's no color names for these, at least on the color chart that I have. They're by numbers. So this is 847. And it's this red down here. And I will put all of my combos in the description below. So basically, we're just going to go through and take our red and carefully fill in some of these little details in here and I'm not worried about getting this perfect if there's some white space left left that's fine the thing you want to be careful with the water-based markers especially 
you know, if you're using something like the Crayola Super Tips or or a cheaper water-based marker, especially, is not to go back and forth over areas that you have already colored with. One of the drawbacks to water-based markers is they streak. It just, it's, it is what it is. And so we can minimize that by just not going back over areas more than once. If we do, it's not a huge deal as long as it's not repetitive. And I will show you guys when we get to the pencil work how we can kind of correct some of that out. Because really, the main reason that we are using the marker is to speed up the process. It gives us a nice base of color a lot quicker than if we were doing this with just pencils. So if you have issues with your hands or you find yourself getting bored or distracted working on distracted working on one of these more detailed bigger pieces using just pencils which I know happens to me um and then I tend to end up with long standing whips this is a a good option a good alternative it makes these pages feel a little less daunting. And I have a plan for the lightning, but that will be at the at the end, methinks. So this is definitely one of my preferred techniques in Kirby's books and I do want to make sure okay so typically with water-based markers unless your paper is really thin or you really super saturate the uh the paper with your marker it's not going to bleed through so it's a good option on these single-sided pages And as you can see, I missed some spots, and that's okay because when we go in with the pencil, we are going to correct some of that out. Now, I'm just trying to make sure. Okay, so this is the string on his cape. His hair and his cape kind of like intersect up here, so I want to try and make sure that I don't color his hair red. And I do find that it is best to start light. So you're, if you're familiar with working with pencils and you have a good idea, a, a good grasp on blending and you're comfortable using, um, you know, trios of pencils in a, a similar color family to create blends with. Essentially, when you're using the markers, your light color, your highlight color, would be the same as if you were choosing, um, if you were working with pencils. Now, I only chose one red um here and I might not even use the red with this. I might just go right to um right to gray and and black for my detail work. But just for let me go ahead and put this back on. Just to kind of simplify this and give you guys an explanation before I I go on. Um it would be if I took my my gray, so this would be my highlight color. If I was doing this in pencil, it might look something like, making sure I get, so if I was doing this with 
just the colored pencil that sepia that's not what i want so my trio might look something like this if i was working with just pencils and this is um this is uh three of the warm gray faber castell polychromos so when i'm working with the markers as a base i'm gonna take this warm gray too and set it aside and essentially my my marker my n79 marker is going to be my base highlight color and then my two darker colors or four dark three darker colors are going to end up being my um my mid-tone and my shadow So it is a good idea to start light. And essentially the marker is basically just dyeing your paper. So once it soaks into your your paper, you are essentially just you're you're coloring on top of a red dyed piece of paper in this instance. Now you can use darker colors and go lighter in certain instances over top. Uh, it depends on the look that you are going for. If you want stark white or white or light highlights, then you are going to want to definitely start with a lighter color. If you're going for a you know a moodier, darker look. You could probably start off with, uh, you know, a more mid-tone colored marker and then add some, um, you know, lighter, lighter tones in with your pencils. It can be done. Uh, I do it sometimes with plants and foliage and things like that. It just really depends on the look that you are going for. And obviously, since we're not blending out the marker, um, if we want like really stark white highlights, our best option is going to be to go back in at the end with, you know, a Posca or some Dr. Martin's bleed proof white and add those stark white highlights in with, uh, with a different medium. which is more than likely what I am going to do with the lightning, but that will be last. The other thing to keep in mind is you can minimize the streaking of the water-based markers by kind of keeping your strokes going in the same direction rather than back and forth. Okay, so let's go down here and we're going to use this same color um, on his... I'm going to call it a skirt. <laughs> Now it kind of looks like he's built into, you know, the uh, the mountain range here, but I have a I have a vision, and I am going to go up into that little crevice. So 
I think um, I will bring in some different brands of markers later on just to show you guys that it can be done. I just haven't quite gotten as far with the color that I want for my, my mountains. I thought this would be a good place to start with just getting getting Thor colored. It would um, ease me back into recording. Since it's been so long since I have actually sat at my desk. It just always seems like, um, you know, I get on a roll and I uh, have things recorded ahead of time. And then life just throws curveballs and derails me and... But life comes first. And yeah, so in the midst of all of that, I actually had uh, the part two for the Watercolor Wednesday from... The week prior to last, I had the part two recorded. I don't know what happened because just watching the uh, the the video through, it was fine. I pulled it into Filmora and I did all of my editing, and it just it would not uh, it would not render. It would get to like. 95% and then it would freeze and error out. I must have tried it in Filmora Pro five or six times. Same thing. And so I figured, okay, I will uninstall and reinstall my program. Maybe there was an update. So I went looking to see if there was an update and then realized that didn't have the setup file for Filmora Pro anymore and ended up having to swap over to um, Filmora 11 and repurchase my software and tried, tried again. I had to re-edit the whole video and it wouldn't render in Filmora 11 either. So there was clearly something corrupted with the uh, the footage. Blessing out of it, though, is I actually like the interface on Filmora 11 better than I did on Filmora Pro. I do have to relearn a couple a couple things, but. Um, the like the timeline where you you know add in all of your your media and whatnot is definitely more user friendly so that aspect of having to swap programs isn't a huge huge deal but okay so We've got our outfit colored. Now, this red isn't going to really like show up a whole lot on here. So when I start getting into doing my shadows and my detail work, I'm going to bump up to the grays. But it should work as a, what I call a corrector color. And so... When you're color matching and you're you're picking out your colors, it is a good idea to find a color that matches your base color. And what this allows you to do is fairly seamlessly 
use your pencil to maybe fill in some areas where we we didn't get with the marker and we didn't want to go back over it or maybe we did go back over it and it ended up being streaky streakier than we liked and so we don't need to be like super precise with with the pencil but it will kind of allow us to smooth out some of the areas where the marker just you know doesn't look as nice as we would we would like it and so this is uh this is middle cadmium red that i'm using as my quote unquote corrector color i kind of wish i'd done this in brown so i might do something different over top of the uh the red there just to just to change that up So yeah, this just gives us uh, something we can use to just, you know, smooth things out. And I did go a little bit darker for this base color, so I knew that it was going to be... Uh, a bit challenging to find a uh, a red so that's okay because we're gonna do something a little different Some of these little areas up, up here, just the way my desk is laid out, is hard to kind of see without ending up like on the camera. So I might go in with a sharper pencil off camera and just touch up some of these little fluffies up here in the corner. All right, so next, let's start with... Um, this is, actually, you know what, let me try, this is dark sepia. Let's see what we get with this. And I'm being a little, I guess, sloppy. <laughs> would be the word with with this but I just kind of want to like accent some of these little little lines here a little uh shade lines here in the uh that Kirby gave us. And since we did come in fairly, with a fairly dark red, um, we did lose just a, a little bit of these 
the little lines, the shade lines that Kirby gave us. And so we're just going to kind of go in and bring some of that back with the, the pencil. And I'm just kind of following these, these lines. Let me just, I just want to just try something real quick. So this is a uh, warm gray one. I'm not going to do the, this around the whole thing. I just kind of wanted to see, you know, like around where the lightning is. Cause that might help me out later give it that that glow Yeah, that was just just a, a bit of an experiment. So that was Fort Sepia. You know, this is uh, black, and I'm just going like up around. Um, this little belt piece here just doing a little bit darker up around where there would be some shadows and then just up around underneath here because this is the underside of the cloak and it just adds a little separation between Thor and 
the underside of the cloak. And then just around some of these edges. And so sometimes like when I'm doing this, I will, um, I move around the page a lot. So I might stop working on the cloak and then, um, move on to a different piece and then come back and decide I want to add more detail or more, you know, whatever. So that's, it tends to be how my process works okay so i'm gonna Pause on that and let's do all right so out for okay so I'm gonna do his hair and his beard and I picked out this is 990 and so it's this kind of like blonde color over here so Okay, so that's lightning. All right. Got this is Beast Beastra. This is probably one of my favorite browns in the uh, the Polychromos set. I may bring back in the uh, the dark sepia here just for some of these like little these areas where there'd be more more shadow. And really, I'm just taking the bistra and just feathering it up from the the roots, <laughs> I guess. And along, you know, some of these edges here. And I can always 
uh, pause, pick more colors if I, if I need to. Let's I'm not sure what this little piece down here is. I think it's the top part of his vest, but I might, um, I'll take a look at it off camera when I can get back in there, when I can get in there a little looser. Oh, I forgot his um his his, his mustache. He's got a mustache that we forgot about in his eyebrows. Which I'm gonna go back in on the eyebrows with. Actually, no, I might be able to do it with this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's do, now I didn't pull out any pencils for, um, for the skin tone and I'm kind of scared about this. So we're just going to lay the marker down for the skin right now. And this is 910. And then some of this is going to get I'm um, adjusted with pencils anyways, depending on what I end up deciding to do with the, uh, the lightning. But we will lay down on the face. 
And let's do... The rest of his body. So I am choosing to do the upper portion of his body in a flesh tone because there's going to be a lot of brown down here. So we're going to do the upper and I'm going to I'm going to find a way to taper the the flesh tone into the mountain down here. When I get to that point, so this is looking pretty streaky. I actually find when you get into like the super light colors like this, you definitely notice the streaking a bit. A bit more but that's fine because when I pull colors from the pencils uh, or, yeah when I pull colors from the pencils to tone down the um, the skin I should be able to correct some of that and we're gonna do a bunch of detail work down here anyways So I'm just going to kind of Okay, got that. I pull. I thought I pulled a. I thought I pulled a color for this, but I might not have. So I'm gonna do these outlines on his upper piece of his tunic and then this portion down here are going to be gray. Actually, I'm going to start down at the bottom. So I am going to just do this whole thing in one color and then I will go back in with my darker gray pencils and do my detail work. Sorry guys, I keep drifting towards the bottom of the uh bottom of the screen pulling the book towards me. Yeah. We're just going to do this whole thing in this base color of this gray. And then it'll look better once I come back in with the darker pencils. It will all come together. I promise. So 
So then let's do up here and around this arm. And these little pieces right here. And we'll do the collar. Okay, that all set. I'm digging how he's looking so far, you guys. Not unhappy at all. Uh, let's use the sepia for this and see how we do. So yes, sometimes um, I will ignore the little like little little detail lines and just put my shadows in where I think they would go.
Ugh. Eat your heart out, Chris Hemsworth. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so we are um, we are at about an hour um, on our on our Thor. Uh, so that's going to be the end of part one. Uh, now I have no idea how many parts this is going to take me. It depends on what I end up deciding to do with you know the, the background and whatnot. And I might not use markers and pencils for the background. I might do something different. We will see how um, we will see how it goes. But I'm having a lot of fun with this. I really like the way that he is um, he is turning out so far. I hope you guys enjoyed um, enjoyed it so far. Um, so with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I super appreciate all of your support. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified when I post additional content. And I will see you guys in part two. Thank you so much.